Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to address in my contribution to this debate, which has actually had some quite uh, interesting parts to the discussion, uh, I want to address my remarks uh, broadly around accountability and transparency in our democratic system in a general sense, while um, obviously uh, concentrating on this bill in hand tonight. Um, I, first of all, I want to say that, um, that, the, uh, that this bill is not a waste of time, which is what one of the previous speakers from the National uh, Party said at one point during tonight's discussion. And I think that, that's a real shame. Um, I'm pleased that Chris Bishop uh, disagreed with him and said that it wasn't a waste of time, um, because clearly it's not a waste of time. And I really do commend uh, Kennedy Graham for his work in bringing it before the House, because I think it's actually allowed there to be a, a very useful discussion about a really important um, a, a transparency around a really important part of our system, uh, around how judges operate, and and dealing with some of the constitutional issues uh, around that. So it definitely was not a waste of time, and there, there's a high degree of integrity uh, in the um, in the intent of this bill. When I, uh, so I didn't sit on the select committee, Mr. Speaker, uh, but I have read the committee report. Uh, that looked at, uh, and I've looked at all of the previous speeches on this bill, and, and looked at how this debate has evolved, and um, and I've also I'm also one of the speakers on the judic judicature modernisation bill, that weighty tome uh, which we debated last week, uh, and I am looking forward to seeing the SOP from the Green Party uh, on um, on the matter before us tonight. We're, the first thing I did was go and look at what Charles Cheval said in his first reading speech, where he um, he uh, gave great credence to the principle, to the intent of this bill, which is the principle of the open administration of justice. And I, I think I don't think you can go past that in the sense of how important that is. Um, but of course, he raised uh, that there that there were um, serious constitutional and other legal issues that obviously the submissions focused on uh, in, uh, when, when, when it went before the Select Committee and the fact that there was no comparable precedent anywhere um, to show how this worked, such a register could work, of pecuniary interests could work in other jurisdictions. And clearly that, um, that proved to be uh, problematic. And then I looked at the uh, uh, speeches on the beginning of the second reading of this bill and I particularly want to refer to Jacinda Ardern's um, comments around the, the alternative proposal around the rec recusal guidelines, which came out of the Select Committee, and I don't think, um, to be honest, I don't think there's any uh, disagreement around the House on the fact that that is a better way to deal with it. But what Jacinda um, Ardern pointed out was that... Um, that if the Law Commission was so clear that those guidelines needed to exist in primary legislation, then surely Parliament should take some interest in the nature of the guidelines themselves. Now that's why I think we do have to, uh, I think there is more room for debate and when the Judicature Modernisation Bill comes back to the House for further debate and the SOP I think we comes before us, I think we do need to have that discussion. I do note um, in uh, the Honourable Chris Finlayson's speech and speech in response, which was by and large a pretty um, good speech, can I say, but that he mentioned, he said that um, that this issue was not lightly touched over, and nor was it done in a slapdash way. Well. I'm not sure that that's the case, and I'm not accusing the government of being slapdash about it. I just think that we have to have a further look at it, and so I want to make that point tonight. Um, but this, the, the, the other point, actually going back to what Jacinda Ardern said in her, her second reading speech, was to touch on the, um, on the register of, um, of, of, of corruption and how 
parliaments are held to account around corruption. And in, when Transparency International released their latest report on this last, late last year, uh, New Zealand had slipped from number one to number two. Now, it, on the face of it, that doesn't seem yep. okay. uh, very particularly significant, but uh, in reality, I think we have to look a little bit beneath and, to, and, and the other thing is that we have to do is to remain uh, eternally, we must remain vigilant on, our, uh, on, on any anti-corruption measures, on any accountability measures of uh, all of the parts of government and all of the parts of our system, of which the judicature is an important, uh, an important part. And so I want to actually uh, to draw the House's attention to the fact that, um, that there is a, 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 a measure that New Zealand still hasn't taken, which is to ratify one of the obstacles to New Zealand leading that index of, um, of uh, corruption, of, of, or as least corruption, was its failure to ratify the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, or UNCAC. Um, which, oh, which over the last 11 years, so that's 11 years since we signed it, and 11 years we still, in 11 years we still haven't ratified it, and and there are um, Pacific nations, I think 10 Pacific nations that have have ratified it, and there's always another excuse in this country by this government as to why we shouldn't ratify it, and which would give um, certainly credence to the perception that New Zealand is taking very seriously measures against corruption. Uh, and, um, and, and, and so important that last in, sorry, in 2013, there was a letter sent by Transparency, Transparency International to three ministers of this government, Murray McCulley, Judith Collins and Tim Grosser, asking and pleading for this to be ratified. The response came back from Judith Collins uh, in August 2013 saying that she thought this would be advantageous, but there was just a few little rats and mice pieces of legislation that needed to go through in order for us to be able to ratify it. Well, um, we're still not there, Mr Speaker, we're still not there, and this is an, that's an important measure, it's an important index. Another important index, which the House may not know about, that this year, um, which is a measure again of anti-corruption um, against which New Zealand will be judged, is called the Government Defence Anti-Corruption Index, which has only occurred once before. It was in 2013 and it's being done again this year and New Zealand is going to be included in it this year, which reviews the corruption risk and vulnerability in defence ministries and armed forces. So the 2013 um, index uh, looked at 82 countries. Um, I, I put to it to you, Mr. Speaker, that this is highly relevant to um, to, to, to this, judges. To, if we can to, get to judges' pecuniary interests, to, yep. because it because it's a measure of the of of an anti-corruption. It's a measure of transparency and accountability, and it's it's one of the measures that is used. Uh, and we and by dismissing this bill tonight. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, and saying that the, that another bill, which includes a, a small part, which uh, includes uh, guidelines for um, for, uh, for judges' interests, we we are still leaving open the question of are we as a country uh, putting in place enough measures? Do we have enough measures in place for anti-corruption, for vigilance, for um, transparency and accountability in our country? So that is one. This um, this measure of our defence forces uh, is actually one of those measures, and it's a new measure which is going to be um, uh, appearing uh, later on this year. Uh, it covers off on appointment processes for the independence of the defence force and security establishment, so it looks at how uh, top positions are actually, such as the GCSB, are being um, are being appointed, and um, and whether or not there's enough um, independence from the political masters. So that's a, another very important measure of accountability and transparency order, order, in our country. Order. I'm just going to interrupt the member for for the last three quarters of a minute and ask her now that the. Transparency of Defence Ministries is certainly not part of this bill. Claire Curran. Thanks. Thank you, Mr Speaker. 
Um, uh, in closing my remarks, um, New Zealand is, is, does have a high reputation for anti-corruption. Uh, it's very important that we remain uh, ever vigilant on ensuring that we have measures in place right throughout uh, all of our processes of government and all Order. parts of government. Um, and this bill has not been a waste of time. Um, it has uh, provoked uh, extremely good debate throughout the House tonight, and, uh, and we look forward to seeing the Greens SOP on the Judicature Modernisation Bill, which takes this issue a little bit further. Thank you. Just but before I call the next me member, it's, uh, I think it's the third time today I've asked, in, in every case, new members um, call them to order. It is not the practice of members to stand in the aisles and talk to other members unless they are the leader, deputy leader of a party or a whip. Uh, it's, it, it is actually quite rude. <laughs>